back now to a story we mentioned at the top of the hour. President Obama taking some flack for a photo op at the memorial for Nelson Mandela. The news cameras caught the commander in chief posing for a selfie with two other world leaders. And the critics started in on whether this was appropriate. The Danish Prime Minister and David Cameron uh, of Great Britain. Mark Hanna is a Democratic analyst, David Webb, a conservative radio talk show host and Fox News contributor, and Jonas Bilbor is a criminal defense attorney. So the critics are saying, <laughs> who takes a selfie at a funeral, basically, a memorial service, and they say it was disrespectful. David, I'll start with you on it. It was, and I mean, <laughs> whether it's, you're a head of state, Megan. Cameron, uh, the Danish Prime Minister, and President Obama, better places to do this. You're a head of state. This is going to get picked up. Negative press. I'd be more worried about what Michelle says about the president's apparent jocularity with the Danish pastry next to him, with all due respect, that he may be in a little trouble because she looks unhappy. Appar apparently she's unhappy, and then she sat between them. So I think Barack might be a little chilly. But you know what? It, it, it might have been rude for, for, you know, if the Danish Prime Minister leans over to you. John and says, like, hey, hey, come on, like, pose. Like, what, what was he supposed to say? Like, but he can you're say being no. inappropriate. Yeah, Megan, say he's no. supposed to say no. I've been racking my brain trying to figure out when is it ever okay for a leader of the free world to take a selfie. And the conclusion is, Never <laughs> save the merriment for the Irish funerals. This was not okay by any stretch of the imagination. He's at a memorial. He's at a memorial for another leader. This makes absolutely no sense. And I agree. Michelle Obama probably gave him a piece of her mind when they got home. His critics, Marks, are saying that, that it, it, you know, it, it shows he he wasn't really that, you know, moved. He wasn't taking it seriously right. enough. And that, you know, it was a breach of decorum by our leader who's representing us. Decorum, Megan, people Great. who are criticizing this have no idea what a South African funeral is like and how South Africans celebrate and honor their heroes. This I did was see at, dancing in just, the streets after Nelson Mandela died. You have a point there. Let's just, let's just say that this was actually at a stadium where there was singing, there was dancing, all sorts of people were taking photographs. We, this wasn't six hours of reflective silence. And if people really think that the president wasn't giving Nelson Mandela and his legacy its due, they, I would like to refer them to the eulogy, the very stirring eulogy the president gave on his behalf. Was oh this a funny I'm sure people are going online moment? right now yeah. to pull that up. But there, there are no pictures of the okay. eulogy, Mark. Wait, let's there are a lot look, of it's them. just can, inappropriate can, as a head of state. Video. All right, we'll leave it at that. Let's move on to Times Person of the Year because we're apparently going to find out tomorrow who it is. And among the top ten finalists, Senator Ted Cruz, Miley Cyrus, and Kathleen Sebelius. Look at this picture we have of Kathleen Sebelius. <laughs> she looks like she's about to give us a shot. Uh, <laughs> the question is whether she should be on the list given the enormous troubles we have seen with healthcare. I mean, that, the, the rollout of Obamacare has been a disaster. Mark, let me start mm -hmm. with you. Both sides of the aisle agree to that. What is she doing on that list? Look, the, the, Times Magazine, Time Magazine's Person of the Year, it's meant to represent somebody who's influential. So you see on that list Ted Cruz, who symbolizes, you know, the divisiveness of our political system right now. He's not necessarily a universally popular. In fact, he was the first person to appear on your show. So maybe he deserves to be uh, mm. the most influential mm. because Second. he made that debut. You raise a good point. David, uh, what do you think? Ms. Sibelius, well, does she deserve to be there? I love how Mark goes to the negative on Ted Cruz. They're polarizing figures and time's trying to get attention. They want attention with Miley Cyrus and twerking. I yes, agree. I said it on your show. They have <laughs> Ted Cruz because he's a divisive figure for some, a unifying figure for the conservative base. But Kathleen Sebelius can have a global effect. She heads Obamacare. And I might have a little perspective on this, having been one of Time's Persons of the Year, oh. that it's really <laughs> about really? who has influence and there's it's just it's something about a movement like the Tea Party something about Sibelius that can have a greater effect with Obamacare on our economy and on the globe so it's time getting attention if you were a two Tea Party guy and they did the protester right yeah I was yeah. in the protester in 2011 nicely done all right John yes. let me ask you about this next case because mm -hmm. we teased this earlier a six-year-old boy from Colorado has been suspended right and now has sex harassment offender on his permanent record for kissing a classmate on the hand. And just in case you're wondering how evil this child clearly is, listen to him for yourself. Just listen to him. It was during class here. Yeah. We were doing a um, reading group. And I mean, no one kissed her on the hand. I mean, it's, it's a miracle it's taken this long to get that kid out of that school. <laughs> the, what is Laurel coming to, Jonna? 
This is absolutely insane. And I, I'm going to admit on the record that when I was five, me and Dougie Raymond used to kiss each other on the mouth Ooh. when we weren't fighting over the unbroken crayons and we didn't land in jail or get suspended. Dougie, here's the, Doug, Dougie Raymond, if he's out there, Facebook me. But here's the <laughs> thing. when <laughs> A kid who's under seven is legally incapable of forming any sort of malintent other than whether he should overturn the Candyland board when he loses to his little sister. Yeah. So in order for a school to say there's a zero, policy, a zero tolerance policy when it comes to sex harassment when you're dealing with a six-year-old is nuts and the school should actually be held liable for this because now but this kid thinks he did something wrong Mark, she, and I she is she is ignoring his prior history because there was <laughs> another incident in which he actually kissed this little girl who, by the way who has no problem with this I right. think we should lock him up and throw away the key, <laughs> Megan. Oh, no, look, this, this kid, what, what's really a problem here is the fact that it trivializes actual cases of sexual harassment between which, adults. Which, by the way, yeah, don't start until you're at least in your teenage, right. teenage right. years. But that's, that's actually a real problem in this country. So by t saying this kid, is this an example of sexual harassment, we're actually basically delegitimizing all the other types of sexual harassment that do exist in, the, in this world. This is, this is absolutely, we can all agree on this panel, ridiculous absurd. Yeah. Thankfully, I don't think his uh, elementary school record will translate over onto a criminal record at some point, I hope. You know what? I hope somebody yeah. gets a good laugh out of this. Some college <laughs> gets a good laugh out of this on his, <laughs> on his permanent record and says, says much more about the school district than it says about this little child. Poor Romeo. Great. Panel, great to see you. Great to Thanks, see you, Megan. Megan.